The HardQuest HRV is a functional assessment tool for research and education purpose only. So today we go to the basic HRV analysis. First, when we record electrocardio signals, so the computer will help us to calculate normal to normal R wave. So then it's transferred into the arrhythmogram, so the, which is kind of like representing the each RR interval in a different variation. So this why so it's building up a normal waveform arrhythmogram. So the, this is how the, the time domain. So the basically heartbeats to beats are our interval is calculated and then so confirming into the converted to the um, rhythmogram so what's the time domain so the basically time domain so it's it's interval between rr interval and then so they changing slightly with uh, affecting by autonomic nerve system so that's why so when we see a nice reaction of the heart rate or our interval will change smoothly like this is what we have resilient robust dynamic changes our our interval on the lower screen is showing up so the low heart rate variability so you don't see any changes so the heart rate so the rr interval is not so changing and we see it's kind of like well little line so it's not half a waveform so what's the high HRV? So the high heart rate variability with a very good adaptation. So the heart is very quickly adapting. So the, the, we have influencing from the autonomic nerve system and neurohormonal. And we can see how this RR interval is changing and producing nice, nice nicely uh, rhythmogram, which is kind of like represent in this case. So how how looks uh, heart rate variability with uh, not so good adaptation? This is what example. So when we look just on an electrocardiogram, so we don't see this kind of like, well, visually, we don't see these quick changes. And this why, so when we calculate, the computer will help us to calculate all this RR interval. So it's transferring to the rhythmogram. And we see, so the rhythmogram is kind of like a flat line. So this is what they kind of like all showing up with a low heart rate variability. So we usually kind of like, well, it's like music of the heart, heartbeat, so they, they changing. So we see it's kind of like the whole spectrum of different frequencies. So this is kind of like, well, as we convert this into the musical file, so we see it's a lot nice heart music. When we see don't, when we don't see the nice heart rate variability, so it's kind of like cut it out. So we don't have a lot of spectrum and spectrum frequency in this why. So the heart music is kind of like well doesn't have enough spectrum frequency showing up. So what's the spectrum analysis? So the, basically the computer will help us to analyze through the fast Fourier transformation or FFT formula how much percentage we have a different frequency in the electrocardio signals. How much we have high frequency, low frequency, and very low frequency. So the basically it's easy kind of like explain when we light is going through the prism, so it will kind of like showing up a different um, color which is kind of like, well, like a rainbow. The same idea, so when we're analyzing the rhythmogram, so we see how much we have very low frequency, low frequency, and high frequency input, which is showing up on the pi, how much percentage we have high frequency, in this case, 23%, low frequency we have 23%, and the very low frequency is a 54%. The frequency spectrum is kind of like will give us information how much we have input from autonomic nerve system and neurohormonal. So the result of HRV analysis can be analyzed by spectrum analysis to demonstrate the pattern of the autonomic nerve system health or dysfunctional use of technique called uh, the fast Fourier uh, transformation, Fourier analysis. This method allowed to break down the frequency band uh, with a specific high frequency, low frequency, and very low frequencies. So the high frequencies are corresponding with a spectrum from 0.14 to the 0.40 hertz, which is kind of like more representing the parasympathetic nerve system. The low frequency is from the range from 0.04 till 0.015. Um, so this is the more sympathetic and very low frequency running on the lower 
uh, frequency spectrum range, which is kind of like a neural hormonal regulation. So the human uh, frequency spectrum diagram, so we, when we run the heart rate variability, so we can see what's the uh, regulatory, how the regulatory system is doing. So how much we have input from autonomic nerve system and how much we have input from the sympathetic, parasympathetic and neurohormonal regulation. So um, regulatory system is divided and the heart, heart quest uh, HRV analysis into the A, B, C and D parameters, and which is represent a different level of regulatory system um, affecting the heart rhythm. So the A parameter is represent how much how the bioreceptor is quickly sending back and forth information and how quickly the heart is adjusting to the different pressure um, inside the aorta and carotid arteries. The B level is represent autonomic nerve system regulation, how much we have input balance or imbalance of autonomic nerve system between sympathetic and parasympathetic nerve system. The C level is represent its uh, subcortical area, or we call hypothalamus neurohormonal regulation, which is kind of like on the brain. And we see so how much we have input from the autonomic nerve system and from the neurohormonal. And the D level is presenting its cortical, so which is kind of like central nerve system regulation, which is kind of like give us information regarding so how the brain is working, how the brain is affecting uh, on lower level heart rate variability. So autonomic nerve system is divided in two parts. It's uh, sympathetic and uh, sympathetic this part and then parasympathetic this part. So basically sympathetic is stimulating for some organs and the parasympathetic is more kind of like well down regulating um, some organs so it's a vagula. So um, this why so the autonomic nerve system is more quick and more quickly adapting to changes because they send information through the nerve system into the direct specific organs and so it's a less energy consuming comparing to the hormonal regulation. So what's the difference between VLF, LF, and HF? So the VLF is a very low frequency which is involved in uh, uh, neurohormonal regulation, thyroid, adrenal. So they send this information to the specific organ. For example, in this case, we see so it's adrenal medulla, so which has to be producing some hormones. It's going to the blood vessels, and then so it's going to specific tissue. So it's taking time and the energy to produce, and this is why so it's kind of like a little slow regulatory system. The autonomic nerve system is is two parts. It's a sympathetic and parasympathetic, which is represents as a high frequency for parasympathetic nerve system, and the low frequency, which is represented as in the uh, sympathetic nerve system. And output over here is a different small amount of the neurotransmitters, which is kind of like affecting the uh, target tissue, and we can see the results. This is what the kind of like we see how much we have output from different part of regulatory system from autonomic nerve system, neurohormonal, and then inside autonomic nerve system we can see how much we have um, how much we have input from the high frequency and then from the lower frequencies.